All right, so today we're going to be talking about Chrome DevTools and specifically about testing mobile and responsive designs. So this is part of a playlist uh, on Chrome DevTools. You'll see the link down in the description to the full playlist. This video, I want to talk specifically about a situation where you've been working on your design, you've been testing it on your own computer, and then you suddenly realize that you don't have a stack of 100 different devices that you want to test your design on to make sure it works at different resolutions with different features and different capabilities. So Chrome DevTools can help us with this. So I'm going to open up my uh, DevTools here. I'm going to use the command option C for CSS. Open that one up just to start with. Now inside of here, we can absolutely look at the HTML. We can absolutely look at the CSS and look at the individual properties and colors and so on. One of the things that's a little challenging to test is dark mode and light mode. So people can set preferences in their operating system, but that can be a pain for you as the developer to go and change the options in your computer saying, okay, I'm going to use light mode or I'm going to use dark mode. Well, in Chrome, we can come into this panel, the styles panel here, and this little paintbrush, if I click on that, this lets me choose the color scheme. I can toggle between the automatic, which, which is whatever my system is set to, or light and dark. So right now, there we go. This is what my page looks like at this size with light. So the light mode as the preference. And you know, here it is, and I can toggle down, I get down to the smallest size, and I've got the purple text here. But what does this look like if I'm on dark mode? So I toggle that over to dark mode, and there we go. I've got white text at this size. And still got the red and blue up here, but the blue is a little bit different when I'm on the light mode. So quick and easy way, and then you can always go back to the automatic to just be what your system is set for. So that's the first one. Great little toggle there. Now the other one I want to show here, not this one that we talked about in the previous video, but this one right here, the device toolbar. This one right here. So I'm going to start off at the top of this one. Now responsive. This is I'm building a website and I just want to know what it looks like in different browsers on different desktops setups. So that's what responsive is. I can click on these toolbars. I can drag and look at it. We can go into the options menu here to show rulers so I can see exactly what size I'm setting this at and making sure my breakpoints are working. Okay, 600 pixels. Yeah, okay, great. That's where it changes between these. But there are some shortcuts here beyond just the rulers and dragging it around myself. Right here at the top, there's a small mobile or a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. I'm getting to tablet size. I'm getting to laptop and even bigger laptop. So we can go back and forth between these very quickly and easily to see what it looks like at some preset breakpoints. Okay, great. I've tested the presets, but what about the breakpoints that are in my code. What if I want to jump directly between what those are? I don't want to bring up the rulers and figure out where it was set. I don't want to look through the CSS here. I could look through the CSS to find that, but I can show media queries. This is going to show the breakpoints that are in my CSS file. So I can jump to one. Okay, here's the defaults where I've got no media query. So my mobile first, and if I'm down here in this range, I'm in that default size, default styling. But my first breakpoint is at 600 pixels. If I jump to that, this is what I get. And then 900 pixels was the other breakpoint that I had. So my own breakpoints, I can toggle those and show them right here. Hide and show media queries. Great. Other things we can do. This little button right here, if you might know what that is, it's rotating. So let's go to something narrow here, but if I rotate it, then these dimensions flip. So you can take a look and see if changing the aspect ratio or the rotation in your CSS, if that's something you're looking at, then you can check your styling for those things. Um, also, in this drop-down list, so we talked about responsive here, but there's a long list of potential devices. So iPhone XR, this is going to give me sort of what these are, and throttling we'll talk about in a minute as well, but 
For right now, let's just focus on the dimensions. So this is what we get for an iPhone XR. If there's any JavaScript that's running that is specific to a specific user agent or size, that can come into play here as well. So maybe there's functionality that we have tied to that. We can edit this list. So, okay, wonderful, they've given me this list of things. But if I go to edit, here is the entire possible list. So you can pick and choose. You can say, oh yeah, my Galaxy S3 from 12 years ago. I need that in here as well. So there we go. We get that and Galaxy Note. With those checked, they now show up in our list. Now, I don't care about those, so I'm going to remove those from my list. But you can play with this list. Now, it's not <laughs> clearly an exhaustive list. It doesn't have everything, but you can add if there is devices that you want to include in this list. So we're in the devices setting of this settings menu that appears when we click on edit. So I can add something in here. You know, what about my Etch-a-Sketch? You know, I don't have that in the list and that's something that I need to test to make sure my website works on. And we'll say it's 2,400 pixels wide and 1,200 pixels tall device pixel ratio. So the CSS to actual screen pixel ratio, we'll set that at 2.5. User agent string. There we go. And you can add hints in here. There's lots of other things that you can delve through to set up devices. When I add that, there we go. Now this is part of my list and I can open this up so we see it better. Edge sketch. See, there's a separate section here for ones that I've built. And there it is, my 2400 pixels. That's how this is being rendered. So 12, 2400 by 1200. Great, that's my etch -a sketch Now, something that's been recently added to this is right here, the Nest Hub and Nest Hub Max. Those are newer ones, and they actually have a device frame. So this first option here, show device frame, that's what it looks like. And Nest Hub Max looks like this. So it's not all devices, but they are slowly starting to add some of these into here. And we can take screenshots that will include this frame. So if it has a frame, this will be included. Capture screenshot and capture full-size screenshot. The difference between these two inside of here is that the full-size screenshot shows the entire page. So it's the top of the screen all the way to the bottom if you scroll all the way through here. So the full size would include the entire page. So you get to see what the whole thing looks like. Whereas the screenshot is just what's currently showing on the screen. A couple of other things worth mentioning here, the add device pixel ratio. We mentioned that when creating a custom device. Uh, you can toggle that so it's right here and you can switch between it. Now, if it's a pre-built, predefined one, we don't have access to that. But if I go back to responsive, yeah, absolutely. I can change what the device pixel ratio is so we can show and hide that. We can also bring up device type, which really is just toggling between desktop and mobile, um, which means, hey, look, see the little circle? That's where my finger would be touching. If I'm on desktop, then it's the mouse cursor instead of the little circle. That's really the biggest difference between them. Now, throttling, mid-tier or low-tier mobile. So I've got a responsive website that I have built and no throttling. This is both CPU and network throttling. So mid-tier mobile, we've got mid-range, uh, network connectivity, and we've got mid-range CPU or low range, obviously low for both of those things. There is one other spot that you can go to do this. I'm just going to hide the device type. One other place that we can go to, if we close this settings menu over in the performance panel, which I will talk about more in, in another video, in this settings for the performance panel, we have throttling for the CPU, we've got network throttling and hardware concurrency, so GPU and CPU. These are things that we can toggle and then we can do recordings of what we're doing on the screen. So how the thing performs with these settings changed as well. So that's another place that you can do some throttling. 
All right. And that is it. That is a whole bunch of ways that you can test and make sure that your website is doing what you expect it to do on all kinds of different devices and different sizes. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. There will be lots more videos for the Chrome DevTools. But as always, thanks for watching.